Okay, this is just a brief overview of the section in writer's reference, section A1, that is, uh, in, that's titled Reading and Writing Critically. So this is a really key section in this textbook um, as you prepare to read text and write about it. So there are five different sections in this, uh, this section. Reading actively, outlining the text, summarizing, analyzing, and then ending that with writing an analysis essay. And so you're going to be working through this um, in the next two weeks. Um, so first of all, A1 is, is called Read Actively. And so the text shows you and tells you that you need to engage with the text. And so we can engage in a variety of ways. The first way is to preview. It's always recommended to take a look at titles and subheadings and the author and any images that are there. Kind of preview the text and get an idea of where you're headed. Um, the other thing that I highly recommend for you for this class is annotating. So everything, um, all the articles that we are reading are those that can be printed by you. And if you can, I, I suggest that you print articles and that way you have the ability to write on them and to underline and circle and ask questions. And so annotating is one of the key skills that you need as a college student. Um, the book also recommends conversing with the text. Um, there's a, several different names for this. Um, you can call it's a dialogue journal or a dialectical journal. Uh, let's see what the book the book calls it a double entry notebook. And um, so this is where you make notes on the left side of the paper. You make a, you make two columns and then on the right side, you put in your thoughts, your opinions, your questions there. That is conversing with um, the text. And as you are going through that, and you can be asking yourself the so what question, um, that will help kind of guide you into understanding what is being said. So the first writing activity you guys are going to do is the outline. This is a way to help you understand the text. It's not me. It's not your writing. It's not your paper yet. You are just basically like digesting the what the text says and then you know reporting it back. So in an outline method. So these outlines should be in your own words. You should focus only on the author's main ideas and major parts and include the thesis in your own words. So the thesis is always the author's position, the author's, what, what the author is arguing, um, main points, and then of course, the conclusion, the author's conclusion. A1C is the next step that you're going to do in its summary. So summarizing sounds like a really easy thing. Uh, but it's a, it's a skill that many people struggle with, and it's really needed because you're going to have to use summary and paraphrase um, whenever you are uh, doing your research paper or any research paper. So, A1C um, deals with how to summarize. There is a really great uh, little green box where you'll find these same guidelines on page 64. And here they are. So these are the basics. In the first line of your summary, so a summary is going to be a healthy paragraph, should be. The first line of your summary include the author and that in the author's thesis immediately. Not word for word. We are not quoting here. We are going to quote sparingly on these summaries. Um, but you do need to like tell what the author is arguing. You're going to maintain a neutral tone because this is not about your opinion at all. You are just relaying what the author has in, in his or her text. Um, you are going to use third person point of view. Okay, so um, if the author's last name is Smith, you're going to say Smith argues, Smith explains, that sort of thing. At no point will you, you use I, me, or my, that's first person point of view, and you shouldn't use um, your, you, your, those are, that's second person person point of view. For instance, uh, the next statement that I'm telling you in, in all of these, I'm using second person point of view here, but I don't want you to do that. That is not uh, appropriate for academic writing. So in the summary, you're going to focus only on the text. It's not about you at all. It's only about the author's ideas. However, you are going to put the summary into your own words. We do not want to 
uh, just have a huge thing, a, a quote, uh, you know, a, a whole paragraph full of quotes. We want to put them into our own words. And then, of course, only focus on the key points because this should be no more than a healthy paragraph, about a half a page typed, um, double spaced. And so you can only spend time focusing on the key points in a summary. The next step, kind of putting um, some of this together, is to analyze. And so while summary might explain what the author has said, um, the analysis will explain how the author has said it. And so this is where you start paying attention to how the author structures his, his argument or his article, how he, the kinds of language he uses, whether it's um, a lot of imagery and personification and that sort of thing. Um, and so you're looking at how, and this is where you get to put in your two cents. Still in third person point of view, I might add. You're, you're not ever going to slip into first person point of view in, in this class. We're going to keep it third person point of view because that is most academic. Um, this is where you get to ask questions and that lead to interpretation. You get to ask questions about the text. You are still focusing on the author's main ideas and thesis, but you're focusing on how the author is getting those across and whether the argument is effective or not. This is your chance to really, you're dissecting really the, uh, the author's argument and determining whether it, it makes sense or not. And in this particular time is when you have to balance summary with analysis. So um, we're not going to miss a, we're going to write, do the analysis in our analytical essay. That's the last part of this section. So this section carries you through um, an entire process, starting with Betsy Taylor's little article titled, Big Box Stores Are Bad for Main Street. And we have Amelia Sanchez, our student. She is reading um, the Big Box Stores Are Bad for Main Street. She annotates it. She outlines it. Um, she summarizes it. Then she begins to analyze. She creates a thesis statement. And then she writes her analytical essay. So it's really important that you follow all the steps. Watch how Amelia Sanchez deals with Betsy Taylor's text from beginning to end. Okay, And then that's what you're going to do with your own article. So the analytical essay is going to explain a particular text through your analytical perspective. You have to have a thesis statement that shows clear judgment. And listen, you can agree with the author in the text. You can agree with everything they're saying, but you're just still going to show how the author gets his or her point across and whether or not the argument is effective, basically. Um, you can use uh, the analytical language in your, in your topic sentences, and that, that will show your reader what you're doing. Um, and also, don't forget to include proper MLA citing. It may be appropriate at times to, to quote the article and the author. And if so, make sure you cite it properly. And of course, include a work cited page. Be sure to refer to section A1 in the writer's reference. You should read section A1 word for word, including the examples. And uh, make sure that you understand because all of our first assignments come from this particular section in the textbook.